Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I'm the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing the watch show for Analyzed Adventures. So let's pick up where we left off with the over-analysis of the Blackwell Convergence. We freed the ghost of Frank Loins. He's gone on to a better place. Although you gotta wonder about the voice in his head. Doesn't really explain what happened to that thing. However, we need to worry about that because we still got more game to play. Huh? Uh... Hey, what the... I'm warning you. You? What? A villain from a previous installment has returned. Either Wajedai Games has run out of ideas and it's just rehashing itself, or they're actually going to do something with this villain and advance her story and character and make her a lot more interesting. So let's find out which one it's going to be, folks. So many dead. So many glide upon the earth. Tell me something I don't know. Did you kill Frank? I helped him. I give no thanks. You want me to thank you? How about you buzz off? I can help you. You are still in pain. So much pain. No way. Not again. This ends now. Why do you resist? Resist? I'll show you resist. I see you. I know you. You don't know Jack, lady. Get off me. Joey? Clear off, kid! Get back! It's her! After all this time! Hey! You stay away from her, you hear me? I... I'm sorry. Joey, who was that? <sighs> Trouble. And if you played the previous installments, you already know what's going on. She's the Countess. She used to be a median, but she got severed from her ghost, and then she went banana pants crazy and started murdering people. And now she's a ghost, and she appears to be murdering people. So in life or death, the Countess is just a straight up killer. And also too, you got a feel for Rosangela. Passing out in the park, in the rain. Gosh, again, it seems like some bad things can happen to her. But I suppose it's best that we not think about it too much. It's just one of those things, like, how does Lois Lane and Superman get it on without Lois Lane dying? We're just gonna go ahead and not dwell on it. But nevertheless, we've just got introduced to our villain. And it's an old villain, but in ghost form. So it's almost like a palette swap, but not really. Oh well, let's carry on with the game. Let's talk about this in the morning. Right now I'm taking a hot shower and going to bed. Sure, sure, I'll hold the fort. So this has become a recurring thing in this game. Rosangela goes asleep and has a trippy dream. Poor deluded man, enthralled to a madness that even he could not explain. A madness called the Countess. So is this Disney World extra telling us that this Joel Gould fella had a relationship with the Countess? Oh wait, no she's not. She's just being unnecessarily vague and telling us, Forget about it, I'm just giving you a trip a dream. Ooh, all will be explained at my convenience. Shh, just sleep. Oh, you won't remember anything. Oh, I've already talked about this in the last video and how I dislike this narrative tactic. But even now it makes all of the less of sense. Oh, we're gonna meet really soon, but you're not gonna know who I am, even though I've met with you a bunch of times, and we could have been building up a relationship in your dreams, but shh, just go to sleep. I swear I got a plan. Morning. You're perky today. Sleep well? Yeah, I did. I've been thinking. Too much has happened for this to be mere coincidence. What do you mean? In the gallery, there was a painting. A painting of her. Really? I knew it looked familiar, but I didn't recognize it until now. Well, that's a lead if I've ever heard of one. Let's head over to the gallery now. There. It's her. I knew it. Now look at that and tell me this isn't a coincidence. Stupid old hag. We'll find you. Just see if we don't. So naturally, we chat up the gallery owner and she tells us that some guy by the name of Claude drew that painting up. And naturally, we're gonna ask her about the man and where to find him. Where can I find Claude? Knowing him, he's probably preparing for tonight. Preparing? 
you know, glug. Well, doesn't she sound so judgmental? I thought all artists had to have a few brewskis to make it through their creative endeavors. I know I do. But nevertheless, there's only one bar in this whole entire area that we have access to, so sure enough, the artist is going to be in there. And also, just by looking at this painting of the Countess, we uncovered a new location, and that's Roosevelt Island. It has a lighthouse on it, and an important character we can talk to. Oh, except he's not here quite yet. How unfortunate for us. But still, we have a couple of leads we can follow up on. The first one being the drunk artist who isn't going to be particularly helpful to us right now. But the other lead is far more intriguing and kind of sneaks up on you. After talking to the park gallery owner and to Monique of Cube World Films, you hear about this fund. And you can Google it and find an address. So naturally, we're going to have to check these guys out because it's just too much of a coincidence that this fund gave money to both Monique and to the park gallery. Yes. Hi, is this the Meltzer Foundation? Yes. Oh good. I was hoping to ask you a few questions. Paul, this one's for you. Hmm? Oh, sure thing. Come on over and step into my office. Yes, they don't have the most impressive of setups. But nevertheless, here's the gist of what this fund does. It's run by these two brothers. They give money to people. If their business succeeds, they take a cut. If it doesn't, they lose the money. Sounds like a pretty fair deal. But as of right now, there's not a whole lot we can do with these guys. So let's just skadoodle out of here. But oh wait, we can have Joey sneak in after we leave and overhear their conversation, which will reveal to us their email addresses that we can hack. And then, well, we can read their personal emails and find out more delightful information about this fund. And after hacking their Bmail accounts, I mean Gmail accounts, but with a B, we find out that they do business with a lot of people. A lot of successes, actually. Suspiciously, they don't seem to have had a miss in quite some time. Yeah, there's something more to this fund than meets the eye, but as of right now, they're just an intriguing little anomaly that we ran across. We don't really have much reason to investigate them further, at least not right now. But we can go over to the artist now who's just kicking back the brews, or tonics, or whatever he prefers to drink in the bar. I really like that painting of yours, the dark lady. <laughs> My paintings aren't meant to be liked. They are meant to be understood. But nobody does. I feel like Joe Gould sometimes. So he feels like a homeless guy who got handouts from people in the 50s. All right, that's an interesting feeling, I suppose. Guess I gotta go face the art public. See you at the gallery later, or not. Well, of course we're going to the art gallery. We have nowhere else to go to. Claude? Hey, you came. You're drunk. Very much so. We need to talk about the Countess. Who? The Dark Lady. I don't talk about her. So you do know her. Don't try to understand my work. I haven't met a single person who really understands art. Not one. Oh god, how pretentious. But then again, he's drunk. Maybe he's just a mean old drunk. But there's a way to convince him that you do know a thing or two about art, and then he'll open up to you about the Countess. To do this, you have to solve a little bit of a dialogue tree puzzle. Basically, a drunk art guy will tell you, what do you think about this painting? And you give the appropriate artistic response. Naturally, there's a little bit more to it than that, because you just can't say, oh, nice painting. But still, you can intuitively figure this puzzle out. But if you are struggling, you can read an email that pretty much gives you the answers. But anyway, after you're done with this little dialogue tree puzzle, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Really? Yes. Very refreshing. You seem to have a greater understanding of art than most of the rabble here. I do? Listen, Rosangela, was it? Oh, call me Rosa. Rosa. I'm suffocating in here. I need a breath of fresh air. Come meet me out on the fire escape. We can talk more in private. Hey, way to go! Claude, where are you going? Just some fresh air, Joes. I'll be back. Ooh, such ominous words, Amma. I'm just going to show you this. We need to talk about the Countess. Yes. She's so sad and angry. I wonder why. Well, maybe she's upset because someone threw her off a balcony and put a cigarette out in her eyeball. Yeah, ooh, she has a pretty grim way to go. But speaking of the devil... Look out! No! No! No, you didn't! Based on what you just said, Rosa, it sounds like you're upset over someone eating the last cookie, rather than seeing a ghost strangle a man before your eyes. Claude! 
Yeah, the Countess is pretty cold and cruel and just in ghost form killed a man. How the hell can she do that? And better yet, why has not Joey learned how to do this? There could have been plenty of times that Joey could have saved our ass if he could actually touch things in the physical world. Suicide. Well, what else would they think? He was drunk and erratic and known to be temperamental. Just be thankful they didn't- Yeah, I'm kind of surprised Rosa got off that easily. But then again, I suppose cops in New York are pretty busy, so we'll just hand wave that whole a guy was just murdered in front of us and we were the last person seen with him thing. But hey, we do now have a clear objective for the remainder of this game. We have to stop her, Joey. She can't kill anybody else. Look, darling, your aunt met that witch and barely survived. The whole situation could have played out a lot better with the ant had she been rested up, packing a weapon, and perhaps prepared a little bit for meeting the Countess rather than being exhausted and just inviting her into her room. But hey, it's all selective how we remember these things, right Joey? Then I have to finish what she started. Now that could be the tagline to this game, the Blackwell Convergence. Finishing what the ant started. I'm proud of you, Rosangela. You are proving to be much stronger than your guide suspects. Yeah, it was really strong of you to not be emotionally crippled by seeing a man strangled in front of your very eyes. Because if you're talking about anything she actually did, well, she just stood around and watched it happen. But that took some strength, I suppose. But then again, we won't remember any of this because, again, this Disney World extra is gonna, like, blank out our memory for reasons that only she knows. Good morning. Mm, yeah, let's go. So we're gonna go head back to the gallery and see how the gallery lady's handling having her star artist murdered. You're keeping the gallery open? Of course. Everything here is completely sold out. Really? That painting behind you? Yesterday, I couldn't give it away. Today I'm being offered 5000 for it. That's horrible. That's business, I'm afraid. Yeah, there is that old cliche, an artist is worth more dead than alive. Oh god. Please don't happen to me. I want to be rich in my own time. So now what do we do, you ask? Well, we go back to the lighthouse, and there's an older gentleman here, drinking from his coffee mug, and he ain't gonna talk to us. But we can have Joey spy on the coffee mug, and it belongs to some technology firm that we can Google, and then we can get a name, a name of a dead guy who used to run the firm. Perhaps we should ask this older gentleman about it. Are you Marty Goldwater? Yeah, who are you? Rosangela Blackwell. What do you want? Your son. I heard what happened. You knew my boy? No, but I'm looking into it. You with the police? No, but I'm sort of freelance. Well, you can't do any worse than those worthless cops have. So sure, be whatever you want. Well, that's insanely easy. This guy's just going to talk to a complete stranger about his son's murder. How exactly was he killed? The newspaper didn't say. His neck was crushed. They said he was choked. But there were no bruises on his neck. I never heard of anything like it. Crushed. Yeah. Okay, now I'm a little bit confused about the Countess's consistency with her kills. And of course, this man's son was murdered by the Countess. It stands to reason because we are talking about his murder. But getting back to my point, I had thought that the Countess kind of killed guys in supernatural ways, although she was actually choking them. Take, for instance, the murder of Frank. Everyone said, oh, it was a heart attack. Although he was like, nah, I was being choked to death, but she didn't leave any physical evidence of that. People were like, oh, he just had a heart attack and died. What a crazy thing. And also with the artist. They're like, oh, he committed suicide, although we clearly saw him getting choked to death. So it kind of implies that the Countess is able to supernaturally kill people, but when it comes to this guy's son, there's physical evidence of him being choked to death, unlike with the other kills. It makes me kind of wonder a little bit here about the consistency of the Countess's powers. I'm just kind of getting suspicious, that's all. Because maybe, just maybe, because this guy's son isn't a ghost, and he can't tell us that, well, I was choked to death by the Countess, the guy has to say it. I don't know, it just seems like maybe there's a little bit of a workaround to make it seem super obvious that, yes, the Countess killed this guy. Even though it is slightly inconsistent with how her powers have worked up to now. But that's me nitpicking, but that's what I'm here to do, folks. It's overanalyzed. It's in the title. Do you have any theories of your own? Of course I do. It was his rival company that did it. Lazarus Technology. They did it, but I can't prove it. Now, naturally, that's another name we're going to have to Google. And sure enough, we find out that Lazarus Technologies received some funding from that one really suspicious fund that funded the Cube World 
and the Park Gallery, and now this guy's son's rival technology firm. And there's been a death associated with every single one of these fundings. That is very, very, very suspicious. Very suspicious. We need to confront this fund about all these shenanigans right now. Or in the next video. Yeah, in the next video, we'll confront the damn fund because this is all adding up to some sort of murder funding scheme thing. Whew. All right, I'll see you next time, guys.